what is SAP Rise? What is the SAP Activate methodology? What all steps are involved in that? We also talked about few of the practical examples where the Rise method can be adopted and then how it can help you in improving your productivity, faster decision making, and definitely build applications with automation using the next generation tools like artificial intelligence and Internet of Things. We learned that with the help of SAP Rise, we can definitely accelerate our journey to cloud. We can have uh, multiple SaaS applications embedded in our landscape without needing to opt for any third party connectors or any other connectors in general. So all of it we will get with the help of SAP Rise itself if we opt for that. Then we went to SAP Activate methodology. We talked about each of the phases, right from your discover to prepare and explore, realize, deploy and run. We learned that what all things are key in each of the activities whether it is discover phase, whether where you want to basically first start with the information gathering and then go to prepare stage. So a lot of things we discussed. So let's jump directly to a greenfield implementation methodology then. So so whenever we talk about greenfield, it basically refers to like going for a new system altogether. So here it's not your system conversion or taking your old data and like that. So basically, whenever we talk about Greenfield implementation, it involves building a new system from scratch rather than upgrading or moving to an or just getting your existing system upgraded to a new system. So approach here is to enable the organizations to start with a clean slate, we can say, and then design a system that will meet their specific business requirements and their specific goals, which they are targeting. So Greenfield implementation, when we talk about is suitable for a wide range of organizations, especially those that are seeking to modernize their business processes, uh, trying to gain some real time insights and enhance the entire user experience. So if I talk about some of the target companies that may benefit from the Gainfield implementation are your uh, like small and medium sized enterprises, I can say your SMEs as they call. So the who suppose there are companies who are looking to improve their business processes, gain real time insights or optimize their operations. They may benefit from this Greenfield implementation at a large extent. And this will also enable them to compete with the larger organizations and meet their changing customer demands. Then it may benefit your large enterprises as well. So coming to large enterprises, we can say that as they being a large enterprises, they may have the complex business processes which they would have formed over, over the years down the line whenever they started with any of the ERP. So their business processes may become more and more complicated with time. And then also they have a, they must have a global presence. So they can definitely leverage the Greenfield implementation capabilities to streamline their operations, simplify their business processes, because you'll need to adapt to a new system where they can try to pick and choose that what business processes they want to start here and what is something which they want to scrap off because they don't want to carry all that into the new system. That will also help them in streamlining their business processes, their operations, help them in reducing the costs and increasing the efficiency as well. So this will basically help them to remain competitive again in a rapidly changing environment. Then other thing which I can think of is organizations having the legacy systems. So the organizations with legacy systems that are no longer meeting their business needs. So they can also leverage the Greenfield implementation approach to design an entirely new system that will meet their specific requirements. This will also enable them to modernize their business operations and stay ahead in the competition. Also organizations with multiple systems also we can say that they are also the target for the Greenfield implementation. So organizations having multiple systems that are now for them it is becoming difficult to manage and maintain the, their multiple systems. They can also leverage the Greenfield implementation approach and consolidate their all systems and simplify their operations. So as for HANA also helps you in, make, in providing you that, that you can have your multiple systems, like you can have your EWM embedded in one system, you can have your GRC embedded in one system. So you don't need to go for multiple systems, which you were earlier doing in ECC. Here you can have your multiple system embedded in one. So instead of going for multiple systems, you can go with just single system. And then if you choose the Greenfield approach, that will definitely help them in consolidating their systems and simplifying their operations. And at the end, it will help them to save time 
and money as well and then focus on their strategic initiatives we can say then another example i can think of who, whom the greenfield implementation would best fit is some specific industry requirement organization like any organization with some specific industry requirement such as manufacturing retail financial services or industry can leverage the greenfield implementation approach to design a system that will basically meet their specific requirements itself so this will enable them to optimize their operations and uh, meet the changing customer demand so if i try to list down the things that for which organizations the green field may best fit in let me just try to mention so first we talk about smes or if i try to expand it's like yours small and medium enterprises so for them it would be the best fit as it would enable them to compete with the larger organizations and uh, will help them in improving their business processes whether it's minimal business processes or multiple business processes but it would definitely help them in making sure that they are ready to compete with the larger organizations as well and meet their changing customer demands next large enterprises is something which we definitely it will help them because with time they would have made a lot of complex complex business processes in their landscape lot of customizations so they'll get a chance to again go through them and check that which of them they want to carry over which of them they want to build from scratch so large enterprises is definitely a target audience for the greenfield implementations then we talked about organizations with legacy systems so there would be multiple organizations who are still using your legacy systems so for them also the greenfield implementation may definitely benefit because many of the legacy systems are no longer meeting the business demands they are not capable of leveraging the cloud capabilities connecting with the third party cloud available options such as microsoft azure google cloud so for them move to s4 hana with the greenfield approach will definitely benefit in the long run for them then next we talked about the organizations with just copy it with multiple systems as well organizations having multiple systems can leverage for hana to embed their multiple systems into one system and then try to simplify their overhead of maintaining those multiple systems so this will also help them to save money and the focus on the strategic initiatives and then my experience even with the organizations with specific industry requirements we can say so organizations having the specific industry requirements such as be it retail manufacturing etc for them also the greenfield implementation would be a best fit so we can in a nutshell if i try to combine it we may say that the greenfield implementation is suitable for a wide range of organizations regardless of their size industry or complexity so by leveraging the right tools which we'll see further in the session that what all tools does sap provide us and the technologies and the best practices which are available the organizations can successfully implement the s4 hana and uh, achieve their business goals i was discussing this with ayush on yeah. what approach suitable for what organizations so there is would also be a possibility who are already like for organizations who are already on ecc they also might opt for the greenfield implementation considering the complexity and the cost effectiveness and everything such cases are also possible or do we get also such clients yes yes yeah we definitely get so there are many organizations who are still in ecc and then uh, if they want to opt for uh, s4 hana then uh, mm-hmm. greenfield implementation is something which they can choose but uh, it's just that then they need to plan it uh, very in a effective way because it is uh, it will take time for them because they have Correct. been in ecc for close to 5 to 10 years or more than that as well so yes. for them to like transform to a s4 hana system may not be as simple as someone who is moving from a, directly from some s4 version to s4 hana or from like they would have not used the system for long because they would have a lot of uh, customizations lot of old data which right. is uh, like yeah which is to be make sure that they are what is to be archived what is to be moved to the new system so in that case what i have seen is like that they, it was for one of the global manufacturing no it was for an automobile firm they were using it for i think more than 15 years they were in ecc and then they wanted to upgrade so what they did was i mean they initially had uh, like a sandbox s4 hana system 
where uh, like since there were i think almost 15 or 20 sap systems in ecc which they used to have so they used to move some of the data to s4 that sandbox what they had and then there they used to see that what all changes are there so gradually before moving for that wide s4 hana transformation like some of the basically the leaders of that specific systems we can say or that area they were just testing out the s4 hana and that also went on for an year or so to ensure that whether s4 hana is capable of them for the entire their main operations which they want to run mm-hmm. so in that way i mean you need to plan but definitely greenfield can be opted if they want to but yeah i have seen usually them going through brownfield or system conversion but again like if they offer system conversion again they are taking my, many of the le- legacy data into s4 hana which again they'll need to work upon will like, again exactly uh, exactly i mean they are not exactly benefiting from what sap is trying to push them they are again trying yes, to follow the standardization the correct, correct yeah mm-hmm. yeah but And all of so that need to be kept up- in mind Yes, sir. So if they are upgrading and if they have suppose thousand or tens of thousand rules, then SU twenty five step step two will be a expensive step for them, right? Because yeah, it involves changing of the rule and the change uh, change of the rules in which the transactions are there which have bought in the new updates or the new authorization objects. So that approach could also be very expensive. Yes, yes, definitely because that will give you a lot of data, which again you will need to spend a good amount of time to analyze that. and then uh, try to see that what fit what it fits how whether you want to take it or not take it discuss it with the dedicated teams who are involved because it's not only security standpoint i mean though we run that steps but yeah whatever the output we get from those steps that we need to discuss with multiple teams so yeah i mean if you want to do it that way you need to ensure that you have the right amount of time dedicated for doing that activity so mm-hmm. that we don't get pushed from others that are you taking this much time because this tends to happen they feel that as you 25 steps are something which can be done in uh, like in a small span of time but depending on the amount of data the system already has it uh, it takes a lot of time yes yeah as we discussed so greenfield implementation is creating your system from scratch and uh, the process definitely will start from your deploying the latest version or whichever version the company opts for it may not be always the latest version depending on whether it fit the needs or not fit their needs so there are multiple scenarios where we need to decide that which version of uh, as per hana will suit for which client so that's something which we need to think of so next Yes, I mean this we have discussed in short that which is which organizations may benefit. But now let's think about that. Why are the I mean which all our organizations want to can benefit that we have discussed. But then what are the reasons why Greenfield should be opted instead of Bluefield? Some of it I think we discussed already uh, as I used said, Shardul said. So we need to make sure that we have some dedicated time allotted. So the time limitation is something which is. definitely a negative factor i can say for greenfield but then instead of that there are several reasons why organizations are choosing the greenfield over your brownfield or bluefield implementations so let's just talk about these things that why are we opting or the companies opting for the greenfield implementation so whenever a company decides to embark on a greenfield implementation of sap s4 hana it's basically essential for them to choose and then start with a blank canvas i can say for its erp systems so this approach will mean that you need to build a completely new erp system from the ground and then without relying on or trying to modify any of the existing data or processes so several factors are there which may lead a company to choose this path so the first one being your legacy system limitations so when it comes to your older erp system they are often referred to as legacy systems so whenever i refer to legacy systems it always means your older erp systems so they can be basically likened to an old bridge built with traffic conditions decades ago we can think of it that way so as the volume and the type of traffic increases the bridge will struggle to handle the load leading to more and more congestion and the risk of structural failure so yeah just try to relate it that way that it's your old ecc systems or your legacy systems are like an old bridge who were built various ago depending on that era's condition or that uh, those years conditions but as in when the volume and the type of traffic starts to increase your bridge which you have built long ago will struggle 
to handle the load and then it will definitely lead to more and more congestion and the risk of more accidents and your structural failure as well so similarly your legacy erp systems were designed for a different era of business needs we can say and they are not flexible or robust enough right now to handle your modern fast paced business operations so these systems will be slow they are difficult to update i can say and sap is stopping the updates anything which they are providing right now it's a hard stop on 2027 so we can say that it will not get any updates instead of that saying difficult to update so and then they are also incompatible with the new technologies which are coming so that's the reason that we want we need to ensure that the organizations having legacy systems are opting for greenfield implementations because they are they will get a new system with all the capabilities which we are talking about as a efficiency in in this system so if i take an example of a, again a manufacturing company that might find that its old erp system cannot integrate with the modern technologies which are available on the factory floor where they are operating so it may lead to inefficiencies and data silos as well so a greenfield implementation approach will allow a company to build a new bridge so to speak like design and ac- accommodate the current traffic and the future growth so with sap s4 ana the companies will benefit from the latest technologies your latest software design principles it will enable them more and more agile responses to the market changes and your internal demands that's about your legacy system limitations which will is one of the primary reasons for organization to choose the greenfield implementation approach for s4 on next comes your merger and acquisition i can say so you can think of merger and acquisitions as uh, like just imagine your two rivers they are mer- merging so each river has its unique flow the ecosystem and the pathways it is coming from so after the merger integrating these two rivers into one single river with a unified flow requires a careful planning and management so if i try to relate this with the sforhana approach for the companies so we can think of it as when companies merge or company acquires the other i mean these days it's happening quite frequently facebook is come like it has bought the instagram it has bought whatsapp i don't know it will bought it will buy some other companies as well so as in when whenever your companies merge or one company acquires another company each brings its own erp system with its own internal pro- processes as well so these systems often will have significant differences and it will make your integration a complex and a time consuming task so for them also a greenfield implementation will act as a like designing a new river we can say a river course for them from scratch so it will ensure a smooth integrated flow that will bring together the best of the both systems so even for m and a's or your merger and acquisitions as we call so for them also the greenfield approach basically helps them to make sure that both the systems having their unique capabilities are laid on a single platform and then it will help them in unifying the processes and also aligning them with any of the merged or acquired entities into a single and efficient operational model next comes your data cleanup and optimization and this is also one of the major factors for organization to choose the greenfield approach so as in when the company is operating so over the years of operation a company's data can become more and more cluttered with outdated information with multiple customizations which were maybe developed during that time but then they are not being used right now or i mean and then the organization is not paying attention to those old customizations which are just lying in the system and then they are just making new and new customizations without paying attention to the old customizations which were developed for some or the other reasons but then they were never paid much attention to because they opted for creating more customizations so this usually happens over the years that company's data can become more and more cluttered with your outdated information duplicates irrelevant details and it all of it is basically filled with years of accumulated possessions of the old data so this clutter also can make it challenging to find any valuable information quickly and then it can even lead to incorrect decision making as well because it is will be based on your outdated or the incorrect data so starting with a fresh greenfield implementation will basically help them in cleaning out all this irrelevant data and the customizations as well which are not being used right now so it will make you or it will assist you in organizing 
the necessary items in a more neat and clean way it will help you in discarding anything which is no longer needed now and then all of it will definitely ensure that the data in the new sap s4 hana system is current relevant and optimized for the performance of the end industry in which the system is being transformed to it will also help you in enabling the faster insights and the decision making so data cleanup and optimization is one of the major benefits for any organization to choose the greenfield implementation approach next uh, is a major point as well because this is what governs that whether you want to go for greenfield brownfield and all so one of the major reasons is your cost effectiveness we can say so if we try to look at it at a first glance building a new system right from the scratch will feel like more and more expensive option so why are we saying it as a cost effective so let's try to think of it in a different way so definitely at a first glance whenever we are seeing it that we need to scrap the old system build a new system from scratch so it is seeming like more expensive option than your brownfield or your upgrading an existing option but if we consider the cost associated with the customizing and maintaining an outdated system to meet the modern business requirements so today if you are just upgrading your ecc system to s4 hana so you are definitely taking your many of your old legacy data to s4 hana system and then many of it may not be supported as well so in so you need to ensure that what is not supported in s4 hana that you are either creating in the s4 hana version in the ecc itself or you are just storing it somewhere and then later converting it to s4 hana so all of it will also more and more add to your cost it to your just not your system conversion so if you think about all of it and then if you opt for a system and your data is also residing there which is not capable of integrating with future any of the cloud solutions then that is also something which you will later at some point of time you will need to change that or make it compatible so down the line the costs will add on to your just your system conversion is not restricted it to so it may seem like small costs but down the line or over the years the benefits you'll get from the new system is much cost effective as compared to the old system upgrade and then spending more and more on the old system in order to make sure that it is compatible with the new technologies we need to integrate it to so as we talk about so considering the cost associated with the customizing and maintaining an outdated system to meet any of the modern business requirement will definitely can tip in a favor of your greenfield implementation so we can think of it as an example of a like a company's legacy system requires extensive custom coding to add any of the new functionality so it can necessitate you more and more testing it can create your potential for more errors so over time the cost of these customizations along with the maintenance and the lost opportunities i mean there will be various opportunities down the years where you if the system was capable it could have been integrated with lot of other sap systems maybe non sap systems but yeah we can say that you will have those lost opportunities as well due to your system limitations and that can further exceed the investment required during that time for a new sap s4 hana system itself so ultimately i think going forward if you see that okay the system which you have upgraded is taking lot of time to ensure that it is correct enough to integrate with something to even to support some of the new services so i think opting for a new system down the line will again arise hey you know zarin tech now offers sap corporate training that's right train your workforce in sap with our comprehensive program we offer customized courses certified trainers and hands-on labs for both individuals and businesses our standout features bespoke training fully configured servers for practice in-house materials and a dedicated lms plus get session recordings and 24/7 support from functional to technical modules we have got it all choose zarin tech for sap training and watch your team excel learn upskill succeed with zarin tech so all of it will lead to again the decision that if they would have opted for greenfield or the new system right from the start it would have benefited them in the long run so these are the some of the reasons which we can say that the organizations will opt for greenfield implementation so a greenfield implementation will enable the companies to make sure the limitations of the legacy systems they are overcoming with 
they are able to integrate with the modern technologies it is helping them it will help them in creating a more flexible efficient and a future ready erp platform i can say and then definitely by starting from scratch the companies can ensure that their data is more and more clean and it is put in an optimized way it is able to integrate the operations after the mergers and acquisitions and it is running in a, a smooth fashion so the success of such a greenfield implementation project basically depends on your careful planning the stakeholder management i can think of because that's also important to ensure your stakeholders are informed at every process i mean if you are stuck at some stage then this needs to be conveyed to them if that uh, there is something which is stopping you because of some of the products which they have purchased or the subscriptions they have bought but it is not helping you so then also you need to ensure that the stakeholders are given those in information at the right point of time so that also is a factor which will be a success parameter for the successful implementation and then last but not the least i would say understanding your company's needs and future goals so that's something you need to understand in order to ensure that your greenfield implementation the step which you are opting for because it's a long process like you'll start it today it may take you one year it may take you two years so over the line you need to ensure that you are keeping your company's needs and goals in mind as well that this is something which we need to cater to in order to ensure that the implementation once it's done takes care of what was the motto of it when we started it from scratch so before we go to challenges any anything from tex do you think and any of it doesn't make sense or you think any of it any other things which you think based on your experience you want to add that this was something which benefited as the organization opted for a green field or you think uh, brownfield is more helpful for any company so anything you want to discuss regarding the greenfield implementation approach okay. let's go to the key challenges then so whenever we think of opting for a greenfield implementation there are various challenges which the companies face and uh, that's what i think i was mentioning that if you are uh, trying to upgrade your ecs systems or trying to move to a, a directly from a non sap to your directly to a sap s4 hana system there are various challenges which basically comes in while executing your s4 hana greenfield implementation project so let's just let's just try to think of it in some practical scenario way so let me think of example in which we can try to cover many of this so let's try try to imagine that uh, basically there is a factory that is making toys the company is called uh, let me just go to the world file so we have a company which is let's just call it xyz corporation so we have a company called xyz corporation and then it has been in the industry for say close to 30 years so it has been making toys for 30 years now and then they have been using their computer system right from the early 2000s itself when the computer systems were launched and then it was helping them to manage everything the computer system is now a bit old we can say like your cell phone as compared to today's smartphones we can try to compare to your your computer systems like to your old cell phones and then the today's era smartphones which are fast enough so just try to compare it that way so computer systems which the old company or the toys company here it has it does your basic job but lacks the smart features as we are used to today so let's just try to mention that it does your basic job but lacks the smart features which are available in today's era so if like uh, try to think of like someone from any department wants to know that how many toys are ready to be shipped now they can't just look up and then uh, look it up on their computer i, I can say so instead they will have to walk over to the shipping department and ask in person or make a phone call maybe so this old system can't analyze your data quickly and then make predictions as well so the predictions when we say we can think of it like forecasting the how many toys will be sold in the next month or how many what will be the current uh, what is the current demand what can what can be the future demand all of it can't be controlled with the help of the old system which they have so this will basically lead to a situation where they might make too many toys or they don't sell enough toys and they might not be able to analyze that which toys are basically more and more popular 
so that they can try to increase the production of those toys so it will all result in your lost sales and your unhappy customers we can say so the main challenge here for the xyz company which we are talking about is uh, facing that their old computer system which they have is holding them back here it's like basically trying to win a race with a bicycle when everyone else is using your motor bikes or the electric bikes we can say so they basically need to manually enter a lot of data which takes them a, a time and it can lead to mistakes as well so instead of entering 100 toys if somebody tries to enter 1000 toys by accident so they have a lot of surplus which they have created because of that so they can't easily share the information between different parts of the company as well so all of it makes the company more and more slower and more prone to errors so that's where these are some of the limitations which we can think of that the company in initially has so if i try to compare it with the dedicated challenges which any company might face in terms of the greenfield implementation so if i try to talk about only for the sap security challenges let's try to talk about what all challenges we as security team might face whenever we try to go for the greenfield implementation so the first thing which always comes to my mind is your complex authorization concepts which are there in your legacy system so it has been going on for quite some time and the clients would have created lot of custom t codes and custom authorization objects and a lot of custom things which may not directly relate to your security but yeah since the functional teams have created or the technical teams have created due to functional teams demands so all of it entirely may relate to, uh, to your complex authorization concepts itself so your s4 hana basically will introduce new functionalities and it is definitely a shift towards your fury apps so it will necessitate you for reevaluating your existing roles and authorizations so security teams we as security teams must ensure that the access controls are both strict enough to protect your sensitive data and then it is flexible enough to not hinder any user efficiency so the shift to the s4 hana authorization concept will require a deep understanding of the new systems architecture so as we looked at the fury architecture in the previous sessions so we need to keep that in mind that what is there in the fury architecture what is there in the overall system architecture how many cloud apps are there how many compromise apps are there so based on that we need to design any role or come up with any new customizations whenever we are being pitched to and then we need to ensure that the functions the each user or the user group is trying to perform is also taken care of so one of the major challenges from security standpoint is your complex authorization concept which comes up so second challenge if i try to think of is your migration and clean up i can say so this is definitely something which we need to take care whenever we are transitioning from ecc to s4 hana so your migration process is a prime opportunity basically for cleaning up all your obsolete roles your users and permissions which are there and which are un- unused and then which have been there in the system for quite some time so however this cleanup if i try to think of it is it may lead to subsequent creation of your new roles as well new roles new permissions which are tailored to your s4 hana it can be a massive activity because if you are trying to scrap off any of the old roles and the old concepts which are not compatible with s4 hana you will need to ensure that you are backing it up with the new roles and everything but it is something which will help you in the long run and then you need to do it because you are migrating to s4 hana and there are things which are compatible with s4 hana there are things which are not compatible so this is something which we will need to opt for but like we as security team will also face the challenge of ensuring that no critical permissions are also lost in transition so we need to take this opportunity to basically enforce a principle of least privilege which we all are adopting to so whenever this migration and cleanup activities are happening that is a one of the challenges for security team i can say but this is kind of opportunity for us as well to ensure that we are trying to come up with some roles and uh, selecting the right amount of fury apps which are compatible with s4 hana going forward and then cleaning up all the mess which has been there in the system which has been ra- running for quite some time then uh, next if i try to think of security challenge yeah we have done with the authorization concepts clean up the migration and clean up activities 
yeah i can see your uh, patches the security patches and updates this is something which is we can try to think of it as a challenge for security team so sap basically regularly releases your security patches and updates for s4 hana or even for your ecc system it used to release but whether the organization has opted for it on a timely manner or not is something you'll need to see whenever you are trying to push that upgrade so that's something which we need to see whenever we are trying to go for the migration so checking if the regular release of the patches and updates has been implemented in the system keeping the system up to date without disrupting the business operations is again it requires a careful planning and coordination with multiple teams whenever we are trying to do it in the live system so it is a challenging task basically because you need to do it in a live environment where your downtime which is planned can have a significant business impact as well so we need to ensure that we do it on a either on a weekend or at some point of time where the businesses are not operating very actively so that's where this patches and updates challenge is something which we can think of apart from all this technical system related things we should also try to take one more thing into our mind that's your regulatory compliance i can say regulatory compliance and even your data pro protection here comes handy so you need to ensure that you are trying to adhere to these laws as well uh, depending on the geography you are operating in so uh, we know that there are laws such as gdpr sox or the hipaa regulations for different geographies depending on where we are where the client is so we need to ensure that the compliance in asporhana also is taken care of and then it tends to become more complex sometimes because the systems enhance data processing capabilities as in when our systems are created with more and more efficient data processing capabilities we need to ensure that from a compliance standpoint we are taking care of the gdpr and the hipaa regulations as well so we as security teams we must implement any comprehensive data protection measures if required the data anonymization features and the right kind of access controls are there in place to ensure that we are complying with the legal requirements so this may not always involve only us doing everything we need to discuss with the client that how are they trying to manage like what all things is something which they want to ensure that they are complying with the uh, the norms which are they want to operate in that particular geography so this will basically help you in understanding where your personal data also resides across the system and who has access to it so if you are opting particularly it's more related to your hr systems i can say so if you are opting for success factors if you are not opting for success factors you are having your on premise hxm system so what all people have access to it how are they maintaining that from where your user ids are getting created because here you'll have lot of cloud technologies coming in so it may happen that your user id is initially being created in success factors then moving to s4 hana then or either it is created in microsoft azure ad then moving to success factors or any hxm on premise system so so there we need to see that how is that flow basically coming in so we need to ensure that if we know the entire process right from the start of the user id creation to the removal of roles or when the user is rolled off or basically leaving the company so destroying his id and then ensuring the that there is some kind of backup for some amount of time cap in order to ensure that the audit activities are also considered because if you will just remove the data and the user has done some malicious activities in the system which may give a red flag at the time of audit so this is also something which we need to ensure that we are tracking so yeah these are some of the complex challenges i can say in terms of sap security which we can think of there can be various other ad hoc challenges as well which may come in depending on whether it's a, like what kind of situation you are dealing with so we need to ensure that these kind of challenges we are prepared with and then we are going in with a right mindset that this is something which we will be facing so we need to ensure that this is all taken care in a in a all proper manner so that the greenfield implementation or any migration for say it happens smoothly yeah. that's some of the challenges i can say from a security standpoint which may arise anything anything apart from this which you guys have faced which you want to discuss any scenario where you were faced and then it was something which as a security team you tried to manage okay. 
so yeah. let's go so yeah these were all the challenges which we faced from a security standpoint so there are various challenges for various other teams as well which we can talk about in brief because their challenges is also something which i mean indirectly will affect the security teams as well i can say so there can be your basis team challenges there can be your development team challenges so all of them will have their own challenges and then we we are not responsible for ensuring that all their challenges are met but yeah definitely this is something which is good to know as a standard way that these are all the challenges which the other teams also may face so that's something which we need to think of so coming to your basis team challenges because that's something which is linked to security also in a way so we need to ensure that we are aware of the challenges which the basis teams may also face at the time of greenfield implementation so that it is something which is not something new which comes to us so the first thing and the major thing for any basis team doing any greenfield implementation for s4 hana is your system performance i can say system performance and scalability also let me combine it in this so you can think of it as a like an if i try to take an example of any global retailer who embarks on the greenfield s4 hana implementation they will try to integrate its worldwide operations into one single platform so the basis team here will face challenges of optimizing the performance across different geographical locations especially considering the various networking speeds in various regions and the massive volume of transactions which may arise during any peak re- retail periods so we need to ensure that the system which the basis teams are creating are uh, scalable enough to ensure that uh, the system the new as for hana system is able to manage the entire complexity or the entire uh, geographical multi geographical database and multiple things into one system so we need to ensure that the basis team challenge of scalability is something which they are taking care of so from a system performance and uh, scalability standpoint if i try, try to talk about any of the solution how it can help so in s4 hana fury apps is something which can definitely be a like a it like a one fury app can be there for multiple complex transactions or common transaction codes so it will help them in reducing the server load so having the right amount of fury apps is something which will help them in ensuring that the server load is reduced and the scalability which we are talking about is taken care of and then it will also lead to your sap hana's data compression and your in memory processing capabilities to ensure that the analytics speeds are faster and then setting up your regional data centers if required if you are not going for entirely cloud then they also would need to ensure that the regional data centers are set up and then finally it would lead to improving their overall speeds so this is one of the challenges from a basis standpoint which is one of the major challenges then if i try to talk about development team challenges so when it comes to development team finally they one of the major challenge which i have seen them is custom code adaptation so and analyzing and adapting to any existing custom code to ensure that it is compatible with s4 hana is something which the development team faces challenges because the code which they would have created at that time and then ensuring that it is something which is compatible with s4 hana is to be measured and if it is not compatible they again would be a labor, labor intensive task for them to ensure that they are understanding the s4 hana architecture they are understanding that what all things are compatible with the new s4 hana so with the help of that they again need to ensure that their custom code which they have created is adaptable enough for the new system and then this is something which will impact our roles as well because their custom codes if it is created say for any fury app they would have created in ecc so and then now it is not compatible so we need to ensure that if that particular custom fury app is required in s4 hana as well so they need to adapt to the coding which is required for the new s4 hana system because the old coding which they would have created for that particular fury app will not work in s4 hana so development team standpoint i think custom code adaptation is one of the major challenges which i have i have seen and then this also is linked to multiple things but yeah from a development standpoint adapting to new technologies is also something which i can think of so as we security team we are trying to adapt to s4 hana we are trying to ensure that from t codes we are migrating to fury apps so uh, the similar things applies to even to development team 
so they are also learning and trying to adapt to the s4 hana's new programming tools so like the fury fury coming in sap ui5 coming in for your front end development so they, they, this is something which they are also trying to adapt to and there are something called as amdp which i have recently heard so amdp is nothing but your abap managed database pro- procedures so this is also something which they need to adapt to for their back end development so coming to the development team now they need to ensure that their back end and front end development both tools uh, they are trying to learn if there are any new tools they are trying to adapt it adapt to it so yeah that's something which they need to adapt to so for development teams there are a lot of other cloud apps also coming in in the initial classes we discussed about where at the start of the class sap build is something which was brought in so that's also something which is the development teams will need to learn now because that's also a tool which is available for them to be readily used though there they do not have to code that heavily because it is for like non coders but that's also something which the clients may need to leverage so even for a development team that is also a challenge again that comes into new te- technologies itself that sap build there is a now something called as sap build code is there so even they have their own copilot now called as jewel sap has launched jewel as well so they need to ensure that they are increasing their compatibility with the new technologies which the sap is launching so in order to ensure that if a client wants to leverage jewel capabilities it it wants to leverage the ai capabilities which are available so all of it is something which the development team may face and then i think adapting to new technologies is something i would like to add in the security also because we are also trying to adapt to new technologies here and even for us adapting to how the ai tools are operating in the cloud how the low code no code tools which we talked about they are operating this is something which we should try to invest time in because the client at any point of time may request us to start leveraging that instead of just using the fury app alone if he wants to go for any customizations then yeah those cloud apps are available where we can go and just try to customize it so that's something which is a challenge for development team i can say and even for security teams as well if i try to think of one more like let's talk about the functional team challenges as well so even from a functional standpoint they will face a lot of challenges so the major one being your business process reengineering let me just call it bp so we talk about lot of business processes and then it it leading to the increased times in the s4 hana implementation so this is something which the is the owners of functional team basically so any move to s4 hana will require reevaluation and the redesign of your existing business processes so in order to leverage the systems a full or the new capabilities which the system is providing so this basically starts by your functional team doing the analysis from scratch and then they need to ensure that it is completed in a correct way for the other teams basically to begin with their work so this is something which is a major challenge from a functional team standpoint so yeah, i think these are all the challenges which i can think of from a different teams perspective whether it's a security team basis team development team or your a functional team itself so each of these challenges will require a dedicated approach with some clear strategies and plans in mind to mitigate any risks which are there to in order to ensure a smooth sap s4 hana transition is happening so with the help of careful planning and cross team collaborations also are required here or multiple instances so we will finally also be leveraging some the some of the sap's best practices resources and the tools they provide so with the help of all of it we can ensure that the transition to cps4 hana is done in a smooth way so yeah i think some of it all these examples we talked up so i just wanted to take you through some of the challenges from a individual team standpoint rather than just describing you of the challenges in just this slide way so hope it help you can now try to relate to lot of things and a lot of challenges which the other teams may face and then good to know about what they are facing as well because some or the other way it may link to it may get linked to us as well so yeah so that was about the challenges talked about the fury apps library we did a deep dive into each of the components which we as a security team we need to see 
and then what all different categories you have available. We saw the difference between your all apps, all apps for S4 HANA, for cloud, your Fiori apps, and like Lighthouse apps are nothing but your old Fiori apps. And this is dedicated to a section which has recently been come in. That's for your SAP BTP, what all Fiori apps are present. That's I mean, currently we are not using it unless we are working on any BTP environment dedicated for Fiori apps. So I think let's go to SAP system. So, so yeah, there are some of the T codes which you will need to learn here, which are new. So based on that, you will be able to work well with your Fiori. So let's just try to first of all see like some of those services which we talked about. So if we try to think of any example in the Fiori app, let's try to pick any Fiori app and then let's try to see like how to activate or check their O data services and the SIC of services. So Based on that, I think we'll be further able to deep dive into how you can check for any Fury app that whether it is compatible enough with your system. So let's just go to, let's just pick any, let's just go to all Fury apps. Let's go to product version. Let's pick the product version, which is applicable to us, which is S4HANA 2023. And maybe choose this create inbound delivery. So here we'll go and pick this S43. And then we'll further go. So uh, till here, any any queries that how did we ar arrive here? Why did we choose this product version? Why did we choose this? Is this clear to everyone? Like this we discussed in the initial class, but I think let me just anyways show you quickly. So whenever you go for any client system, you need to go to first of all, go to the system, go to status, go to your available product versions, go to install product versions. And then here you'll see that which S4 HANA version you are currently on. So we have S4 HANA on premise 2023 and it's an initial shipment pack. It means it has uh, the current shipment is FPS 01. But whenever you see initial shipment pack, so it will basically relate to your the version without anything done in the foreground of it. So we have a bitted fury where your fury system FES component is also installed in this and your S4 HANA on premise is also installed in this so that's why we have selected that particular version so let's just see okay this is a transactional app we have a app id as well so let's just see that what all things we need to see first so all these versions related things is something which we are assuming that it has been completed by basis but it is something which we need to see as well not for every app but for initially uh, before beginning we need to see that all the components and all are installed for the system so which we have already seen that it is there in our product version so we'll not go there so next comes your first is your uh, is icf services so these two services will will do a deep dive in the dedicated slides as well that what all things what is icf what is o data o data we have talked about but we'll further see in the technical slides as well that what does it do in the system but for now for you to initially start with the fury hands-on I think this is something which you'll need to start. So these are the called as ICF services or the SICF services as well. So you need to check that whether these three services are active in the system. In order to check it for any Fury application, whether it is compatible for you to directly input it in the, the input, the corresponding catalog, whether it is business catalog, technical catalog, or your custom catalog, these three services are something which need to be activated in the system. So you need to first come here, select this, then go to the SAP HANA, S4 HANA system, which we have got. And then, yeah, this is the first T code. Try to remember this. This is called SICF. What sets Zerentech apart in SAP corporate training? It's our unique blend of expertise and innovation. We offer customized courses tailored to each client's needs, ensuring relevant, targeted learning. Our vast trainer database brings you wisdom from the best in the field. Need resources? Access our extensive training material repository anytime. We are all about measurable results, providing detailed student metrics to track progress. And we don't just teach, we build community, join our thriving social media network, connecting learners beyond boundaries. With Zarentech, you are not just training, you are transforming your SAP expertise. So let's just go here. Let's just 
put this in the service name, put a asterisk at the start of it, and let's just execute. So as soon as we execute it, the service name we saw was EWM SIDLV Crest one. So you'll have two components here. One is your UI fi component, and other is your SAP component. Since this is your embedded landscape. Both of them will be in this system only. So we see that this service is here. So just right click on it and we see that it is already activated. So you don't need to activate it separately. So this is activated. You need to check one more service, which is this one. This is also activated. So we have checked for the first service. Let's go and check for the second one, whether it is active or not. Let's go back and put this maybe. This is the service. If you right click on it, we see that this is also activated. This is also activated. So like this activation thing is something which a basis team would need to do. But if not, then I'll also show you if we come across any services which are in inactive, we'll be able to see that how we can activate it. Execute. Yeah. This is also activated. This is also activated, I believe. Yeah. So we have checked that all three SICF services are active in the system. So that's good for us. Then next comes your OData services. So we also need to see that whether these services are active in the system or this is something which we'll need to activate. So let's just select one. Oh, we will be going with another T code. You'll need to remember that. That's slash n slash IWFND slash main underscore service. We have it in the slides as well, but since we are not going through slides, Fiori slides, so I'm just doing it. I can paste this in the chat as well. Wasted it. So this is the screen which you will come to once you enter this T code slash n slash IWFND slash main underscore service. So uh, first of all, whenever it comes to any Fiori T code, right? You will need to ensure that you are putting your slash n as a prefix because I've tried it without slash n. It is not working. So I think SAP has recommended to use slash n and it, like it will open a new window as well and then it will all the purity codes will start working. So just ensure that you are doing that. So you need to come here and then since you have copied that service, let's see. Yeah. You need to just copy it and then go back here. So in the you see here, I mean here we have something called as technical service name, external service name and service description. And then further, like these are some of the things which are mainly required for developers to use, but not for us. But from a technical standpoint, we can see that all these things, the technical service name is something which is important for us. And then all of it is basically starting with Z. So what you need to remember here is that all the services which you will activate, they'll automatically get, if they are active in the system, they'll already be there with the Z prefix attached to them. If they are not activated, once you activate it, then they'll come here with a Z prefix attached to them. So all the technical services, whether they are standard or whether they are custom made, all of them will have their name starting with Z. So that is something which we need to remember. So let's select the technical service name, click on filter. So we can either put it in the technical service name or an external service name both, but I prefer going for technical service name. So let's just put asterisk and let always whenever you put it in technical, just try to remove that slash CWM, whichever you get and just try to put it this way. So here we go. So this service is active in the system. So if you'll try to compare it, how it was here. So you can just pick up this this one because this is a prefix which is attached to the service, which is not required at the time of technical service name. So you just need to ensure that this is there in the system with a Z prefix attached to it, which is here Z simple INB POSRV. So you can see the description of the service that it's basically an inbound process service, which is based on purchase order. This is not much of relevant to us, but yeah, I think this is what ensures that the OData service is active in the system. So we have looked at one and let's just go and then look at if the other service is active in the system. Let's select this, select this, put a filter. So yeah. this service is also active in the system. So we have your Z user default parameter SRV. So there are two services. One is with the slash CWM. So this is something I think which was initially created when this system had didn't had the service, but 
yeah i think with the different external service names but for us let's see what does it give here it just gives us this and origin software component okay so nothing is mentioned for us so for us it's i think just the user default parameter service which we can go with so this is also active in the system so there are multiple things which you will see here but majority of these things is not something which we need to look at although we'll we'll see it in detail all of it what is external service name technical service name what is co deployed mode so co deployed mode i can just tell you right now so this is nothing but it emphasizes that this is your embedded system where your yori as well as your backend system is in the same system so we'll see that in the slides as well where you will get to know but from a security standpoint it's just that these service need to be activated and then if these services were not activated so this is the add service option which you can go to so if you'll go to add service for uh, any embedded system your system alias will be local so if it was your central hub system you would need to enter that particular system alias for this system so in the technical service name we would have entered that particular service name so if i try to enter this service name this is user default no let's just try to see if we try to activate any existing service does it allow us to activate or what does it give us so if i just try to give star this on so if i try to just enter it let's see what does it give it says that backend services are already re registered for the system alias local so whenever you when if you don't get those service in the filter and then you try to come here and activate it if the service is already activated in the system it will give you this error that the backend service is already registered it means it's already activated in the system so this is how you can activate it will will pick some some of the services which are not active also and then we'll try to activate it as well but yeah majority of this you'll find active because i think basis team has done their job correctly so we can see that the services are active so when you come down here you see some data symbol here it means your service is active so if your service is active it will show as green and a system alias here you don't need to add anything because this is your embedded system but if it was your central hub then yeah there is a system alias which you need to add but again this is not something which we as security team usually do but yeah it's always good to know that how to do it if your system is not there in the client system or if they are not aware of all this as well so these are the two major things which you need to do whenever you see any fiori app first come here see that if the right version is there which you have selected at the top then the o data services are active in the system the sicf services are active in the system so these two are basically the prerequisites which you need to know that uh, this is required for any fiori app to start working this is the activity which you will need to do for each of the fiori apps you are trying to implement so yeah you need to ensure that you are thorough enough with this who provides this information to basis was it a basis or security i mean they know already or like you know we need to provide that. so it's good to provide it from our standpoint because for them it will be multiple services which they are activating it is not only fiori related i mean there are various other services related to o data and all which they create so because we'll be getting the fiori apps and then we need to ensure that the fiori app is working so first we should go and check if the services are active or not if they are not active yeah we need to just report to them with the service names that this is the service which we want to get activated in the system because for activating it they have a program which they run so they do not do it manually for each of it like i'll i'll show you how to do it manually from our end as well but then yeah good to go with the service names to them so that they can check maybe in their tracker if this was part of their program which they are trying to run so that they can get it activated with the help of a program or they can do it manually as well i mean like we do like we will do if the service is not active but good to go to them with the service names because they will not know about these services unless we tell them that this is something which is required by the client here yeah thanks so, so we can download all this at a time and then we can we can ask them to activate this right it is not like one by one application will there will be a lot of applications right yeah yeah the so you like i showed you you can download a dump of it but uh, then depending on what all theory apps you want for that you will again need to manually come and see here or from the excel sheet also you can look for it but uh, yeah depending on how many fiori apps if you have limited fiori apps this is the easiest way just come here select the right version 
and then look at the which fiori apps you are looking for but yeah good to go to them with a like a dump of all the services which you want to get activated if they are not active in the system rather than going for the individual services because what i have seen is like they usually have a program like a content creator or a content simulation something which they run and in that they are able to activate multiple services in one go yeah which we usually don't have access to because that's you that usually happens at the start of the system when the system has just been but later on i think yeah i think this individual activation is something which is recommended unless basis team has some activity where they are activating the other services also so we can reach out to them yep. okay yeah any any queries by anyone have you have you done this before or any of these activities or this is the first time you are hearing about these terms okay i take it as no i think but good good to know about this if you have not known about this and if you have known also i think yeah i think i tried to provide you the way in which it should be done in a standard way so i think just go to your sap systems today pick any fiori apps try to pick some fiori apps which are not relevant for the version in which our system is and then try to see if those services are also active in the system some of them would be because they would be used for other things but if some of them are not we can see to that but then yeah the correct practice is to select your correct version and then only look for it so all types of trial and errors you can do so yeah maybe just try to open your system today which you have got access to try to pick any fiori app which is for any of the industry you want to pick or based on the versions and try to go and see if you are able to figure out whether those services are active in the system or they are not active it can be your sicf service it can be your old data service if they are not active yeah let's see it in tomorrow's class what all things do we need to do and then one thing you should keep in mind that yeah these services are transportable as well so we need to ensure that whenever we are activating it and that's the reason which we want the basis teams to get involved because like sicf services are not transportable like they need to be trans individually activated in each of the systems but o data services are transportable so whenever you activate an o data trans service you'll get a prompt that you need to register it in a transport so we'll see that we basically need to create a package there and then add it and then further move it by releasing the tr and all so we will see that all but this is all something which is usually done by basis team but then good for us also to know so yeah an activity for you just try to see some of the o data services sicf services in the system for sicf services to be active you need to go to sicf t code and for o data you need to go to the t code which i have just pinged the iw fnd main service so based on that i think come up tell me your experience whether you are able to find it out whether you are able to check it successfully and based on that maybe we can start session and then we'll just try to complete the green field and uh, brown field also if possible and then yeah post that it's all fiori so we'll do a deep dive into each of the fiori related activities which we need to do also you'll have the lab sessions as well so i think once we are done with couple of classes you can start with the labs also so it has some dedicated exercises which you need to follow and based on that i think we can do the further discussions of the er- errors faced by each one of you and then if you are able to do it all successfully then also it's something which is not good because you should face errors it's, it's designed in such a way that you will face error so we'll see i think in the coming classes we'll see to all, all of that i think for now if you have anything we can answer that we still have 5 minutes to go but yeah the new topic i think good to start it tomorrow itself i think 5 minutes is less because i wanted to cover it end to end your role creation your catalog assignment and everything that we'll uh, see in tomorrow's session so now we have a question so goes- in the chat so- Yeah. Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, so, no, these uh, catalogs are related to specific to the, uh, sorry, these services are specific to the any catalogs or groups or it's at the time of installation only we can activate these things? Like at the time of an installation, basis team usually activates all of it. So, okay. uh, so the, each of the OData services here, you, you see, these are not related to any particular Fiori app. like some of them can be like there can be a one to one mapping of a fiori app to a o data but the same o data service or sicf service is basically used for your multiple apps or multiple catalogs as well so that's so, the reason it is activated at the start 
of it only so but uh, but better uh, we can before before we can activate uh, we can create any customizing catalog and groups then we yeah. can check before that we can check these things right whether it, those are activated or not yes yes correct so yes. the first yes. thing what i mentioned is you need to check this only whether the services are active or not because whether you assign a catalog or or assign anything to a role if the services are not active it will end up in creating lot of errors which are which may not be understood by us because this is something which is being caused because the service being inactive so the first thing is go and check this whether before going for any customization or even going for the standard way as well standard okay so maybe this could be different for the each customer uh, services sorry each uh, catalogs or groups right maybe it should be different the services should be different right yeah yeah i mean usually it is different but i have seen some common services as well so okay okay you can have a service which is common to multiple catalogs also that's also possible i mean as a okay. piece trying to differentiate it but yeah i mean currently it is used as a common service for multiple like the services okay. maybe which are connected with similar category of catalogs we can say okay 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 thank you okay okay no problem so oh, okay for the do a deep dive into the green field round field and the fury part as well that's also something which is good to know but but the recommended way is to come here and then look for it i think that is more simpler because in excel also i've tried doing that but it becomes complex sometimes because sap tends to change a lot of things multiple times so which is the like the current version of each of it is something which you'll need to see it here but then yeah i think uh, good to know that as well 